have a storm coming in. <laughs> it's getting windy. It's getting rainy. It's getting cold. It's supposed to have some pretty good rain come finally. We need it. And it's supposed to have lots of snow up in the Sierras. And uh, really need that too. It's funny because God kind of postponed for me, I believe. It sounds selfish, doesn't it? Well, if it sounds selfish, I think it's more you got the wrong perspective, but I think of it as personal. But irregardless, I personally believe that God kept the weather warm, the sun shining, and everything just right for moving while we were taking such a long time to move into our new place because if it had been cold and windy and rainy, you know, we wouldn't have been able to do as much moving as we would have, and I wouldn't have wanted to. But because it was so nice and it felt like spring, it was like, what a blessing to go with God's blessing into our new home. And we blessed the people we left behind, and God, I hope that they <laughs> give us our deposit because we'd spent so much time working on it. But, you know, even if they don't, we'll bless them anyways. But the point is, is that God blessed us with good weather because we were choosing to leave the place as a blessing and not a curse. And coming into this place, we were happy and thrilled with what God had given us. And we're still happy and thrilled. <laughs> we love it. It's like so much fun. But anyways, what a blessing it is to go from blessing to blessing, you know, to be encouraged to go someplace where you're wanted and you're, you're liked and you enjoy it, you know, and you, you're where you want to be. Have you ever noticed that sometimes people on the internet or maybe in life don't seem to live that kind of life, that they seem to be the type of person that wants to tear things down? You know the kind, you know, the... Some of them say they have a ministry to warn you about going someplace. Oh, you can't be a part of that church. Oh, no, 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 you can't go to those people. Oh, no, 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 God forbid that you, you even participate with somebody that's, you know, not one of them or one of us. Because, you know, we got to warn you. And they seem to always constantly tear down and tell people that are already there to not go there. And they're always looking for faults. Well, can I give you a hint? There's plenty of faults. <laughs> Pick me. I got all kinds of faults. <laughs> Please, God, if you make me big, show my faults. <laughs> I have them all over the place. That's why we do these videos. To let you know that everyone has faults. Of course there's certain things that we don't agree on. But the things we agree on are the important things. Knowing Jesus. Look, if somebody tells you to know Jesus and is telling the Bible to you know, know Jesus and understand him and follow him and to love the brethren, hey, you got it licked. Whatever else comes, leave them alone. <laughs> You're not their master. You're a servant of the same master. We all serve Jesus. You get it? It's kind of like, why bother being involved in someone else's business when you got enough to worry about of your own. One of the things that I really get tired of, and I'm sure that there's a purpose and plan in God's economy, so to speak, for the in the body of Christ for some of these ministries that, you know, are hack attacks, you know, they're constantly hacking at you and attacking you and telling people, you know, not to do this, not to do that, and these people are this, these people are that. You know, and we're not talking about like people warning people about some minor thing, you know, we're talking about people that you got some benefit, you know, from their ministry and now they're telling you, well, you know, you don't listen to that, do you? I do. Who said that? Me. Pick a place. Pick any, even cult. Pick an off-the-wall group. I listen. I do, really. I'm serious. <laughs> I swear. If I swore, I swear. I swear. I listen to all of it. Why? Well, because, yeah, I kind of deal with all this stuff, you know. It's like when people tell me that, you know, these guys are off the wall, I go watch them and read about them and kind of study them, you know, and kind of understand where they're coming from, you know, because I want to know, did they learn anything? You know, did they get something special or, you know, miss the point? You know, and I don't have any problem with going to, you know, like, say, some foreign place <gasps> or even some cult church, you know, I'd walk in there because they're not going to brainwash me. I got Jesus. <laughs> if anything, I'm going to brainwash them. I'm going to wash them from head to toe, you know. And they're going to get blasted all through their nose. You know, it's like, where I am is light. 
where they are may be dark, but where I am is light, man. I got the Son of God inside. <laughs> Wherever we go, hey, guess what? We got the truth. <laughs> we don't need to say nothing. We shine. <laughs> of course, you know, that still gets me into trouble sometimes because people want to know, well, why am I so happy or why am I so, you know, like confident about what I know? <laughs> I don't know because I don't know nothing and I just decided, hey, you know what? What I don't know, I think I'll go find out and I'll go ask Jesus about it once I find out. Because you see, it's not about what you don't know that gets you in trouble. Sometimes it's what you only think you know that gets you into trouble. Because if you know Jesus, then you can't get into trouble because he'll tell you, leave him alone. No man can receive what they're doing except that the Father gives them the ability to do it. That's what he told the disciples. So if you know the Bible, then you know to mind your own business, to do your ministry, your church, and stay where you're at. You're not called to go mess with somebody else. I mean, when's the last time somebody said, hey, you know what, I want you to go mess with somebody else's wife? I don't think so. Well, then what are you doing with somebody else's wife? I mean, that's the bride over there. That's Jesus' bride. You're messing with Jesus' bride, so quit messing around. You're committing adultery. <laughs> Never thought of it that way, did you? Shame on you. Maybe you should think of it that way. Because when we do what we're called to do, we don't have time for everybody else to mess. When we're focused in on Jesus, then nothing really comes in between. When we care about each other, when we want to bless people, then we get together in order to bless them. Like, you know, if you say you wanted to have a big, giant, you know, outreach, you know, well, hey, maybe I could help you build a stage, you know, because I might be a carpenter. Now, I might not participate in your kind of meetings, you know, some of them might be a little bit over the top, you know, but then again, I've gone to some of those over top meetings, you know, and I've ministered there, you know, <laughs> I've been everywhere, <laughs> wherever the Lord sends me. Oh, so... If I'm sent, then I do what he says. So, do you think some people that like get into these shop and chop, you know, attack ministries are sent to do every single one of them ones they do? Because I've asked them. I ask them straight up, you know, and they don't answer me. I'll go and say, hey, you know, uh, these radio shock jock people that are Christians, you know. Did God tell you to attack these people? Did you talk to God today and he told you? Well, the Bible says, you know, I go, no, nah, I'm just curious because, you know, I talk to Jesus. You do? Well, yeah. And I ask him where he wants me to go, what he wants me to do. I even ask him what he wants me to say sometimes. You do? I said, well, yeah, you know, because Jesus said that, you know, don't think about what you're going to say ahead of time when they bring you before magistrates and before people and all these other things because, you know, the Holy Spirit at that time will give you the words to say, so I don't even bother, you know, getting ready. I just go ahead and keep studying as I every day do, you know, and I spend time with God as I do every day, you know, and I talk to Him and I pray and I walk with Him, you know, and I share with Him my heart and He shares with me His. And I kind of get these words, you know, and He goes, well, yeah, you read. No, I mean, sometimes God speaks directly to me. He does? Well, yeah, doesn't He talk to you too? Well, not in that way. Okay, well then, whatever way he talks to you, he still talks to you, right? Oh, yeah, 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 of course he does. Okay, so let me ask you, did Jesus tell you to attack that person? Because you see, when I ask them that, and I spend the time to get to know them, and they get to know me, they know I'm not exaggerating about my relationship with God. So I want to know if they're exaggerating about their ministry, or whether they are taking liberties to go do something God didn't tell them to do. And I know the truth of it, because I've asked. Think about that. If you really want to know about somebody, you only need to ask God. You don't need to go to them. God can tell you. There's gifts called discernment, but more than discernment, there's called words of knowledge and words of wisdom. You might want to know if he allows you to know. And you might not want to know all that you could know. Because really, what you do is you get... And the reason why he gives these gifts is for compassion to reach out. Not to condemn. <coughs> God may allow you to know why a person is bitter in that ministry of condemnation. 
so that you could comfort them out of the place where they're at. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have to go to do that, I really have to kind of be humbled and I have to kind of like be emptied of myself because, you know, myself, I'd like to say, hey, you know what, with the road, Jack. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you're stupid. You made your bed, sleep in it. But when God sends me, then I have to really, you know, kind of fast and pray, kind of empty myself, you know, and be all humble and loving and caring, you know, and real tender towards Him because, you know, I'd love to say, you're stupid, you know, but no, I have to kind of like minister to Him, you know, and kind of be like, you know, a, w a wounded flax, you know, and that kind of stuff, you know, doesn't get knocked over or put out, you know, and flaming flax and the wounded, you know, or whatever, you know the scripture. So, I have to really be like, sensitive. A man sensitive? Moi? Wow! <laughs> Must be Jesus inside. Hmm. So, one thing that I recognize lately because it's becoming really late in the day, meaning the latter days, <laughs> is that God really isn't interested in condemning people. God wants to save people. And one thing I learned that if I really want to minister to more people, I got to get off of kind of like, you know, reminding people what they should already know and just kind of going with what God told me to do in the first place, which was to share Jesus, to share Him. And that I really don't get the freedom anymore to just kind of like, you know, blast away at somebody. You know blow their minds with my intellectual prowess and my ex exegetical constancy and my you know hermeneutic and homiletic that I have you know obviously homogenized into my uh, Christian experience and become you know one of those scholars <laughs> yeah right give me a break we all could eat each other for lunch <laughs> the point being is that why you see, it's not important to be right. What's important is that Jesus be the light, not right. It's about light, not right. So, if you just enjoy what you're doing and would be fulfilled and content in experiencing God in your life and sharing that of what you've gone through and just like, man, I wouldn't believe it. Like today, I, it's really cool. I talked to God again and I was in the bathroom and today he was telling me all about you know bowel movements and you know poop. You know, and if you read my devotional earlier, you'll see that I named it Poop, because it's about poop. <laughs> I was like, Lord, told me all about poop. Ooh, you know, poop in the body of Christ. <laughs> poop here, poop there, poop everywhere. What stinks? <laughs> What's loose? What's a goose? You know, what? oh my gosh, did we say that? Or what is constipated? <laughs> and why the body of Christ needs a bowel movement. Go check out the video. I'm serious. And you think I'm not? But wouldn't that be neat if you were running around just telling everybody, man, it was so cool. God spoke to me again today. Yeah, God spoke to me yesterday. Oh, yeah, He spoke to me today. And you know what? I expect Him to speak to me tomorrow. Wouldn't that be nice to run around doing that? Blessing people instead of, like, cursing them or having them curse you when they see you coming? Oh, no, here comes that loud mouth. You know, they're here coming to, you know, like, condemn somebody, you know, because they are a con-dem person, you know. can't go where I want to go. I won't say condemn them, but anyways, that's what it seems to be they want to do. They're contrary to what God wants to do, so they are damning them, and they're condemnation, you know, rather than condemnation, and they just aren't helping anything with the plan of God, because really, if you let Jesus do it, he'll pray you through it, and then you could pray for them as opposed to confront them. Oh, but I have scriptures that say I can do it. Well, not really. You see, Paul, when he was given some of those scriptures, was kind of like telling you, if you started the church, and you're in the church, and you're part of that church, then being knowing those people that were involved in it, you could deal with it. But if you aren't personally involved in it, and you aren't personally going there, you probably shouldn't be spending that time doing the things that you think you're supposed to be doing, because if you put it into context, you weren't the one called to do it. And you know it. And it's true. So, I see a better way. I see God kind of like letting me go, Hey, Michael, why don't you minister to Timbuktu? Really? Cool. You want me to go there? Mm -hmm. Yes, sort of, Michael. Uh, how about you minister to South Africa? Really? I get to go to South Africa? Wow. Where's the money coming from? How about you minister to Russia? Ooh, China. Ooh, Japan. Ooh. Wait a minute, Lord. Who's paying for this? 
Bitty bow. <laughs> but in sharing these things, God also spoke to me and said, now I want to tell you something about this, you know, you can't, I'm not going to let these go out, you know, and let you go do, you know, blast it away and like pull out a shotgun, you know, and start killing people. I'm not going to let you take out your gun and start blowing people's brains out, you know, because you're going to look like one of those wackos, you know, that you hear about on the news. The good news isn't about condemning people. The good news is about saving people and consoling people and confirming people, not condemning people. Because Jesus said, I came not into the world to condemn the world, but that through me they might be saved. Are you presenting Jesus or your version of religious observations? You already know the truth. So if you want to minister all over the world, if you want to minister to more than a few, like one or two, if you want to have more than your little you know, set group that you say, Oh, just me and my buddies, you know, me and my posse. Well, we think we got it together, so you know what we're going to do? We're going to have our own little cult group, you know, we're going to do our own little cult thing, and we're going to say that we're the only true church, the only true religion, the only true this, and the only true that, because truly, truly, I say unto you that the only thing true is you, I mean me, I mean, you know what I mean, right? Truly, true. So, truly, it's true. Eh. No. In the beauty of how God gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. He loved the world and looked at a wonderful aspect of a huge number of people that He was going to save to present a bride to His Son. For what Father, especially being God, would not prepare a bride of phenomenal proportions. Think about that. <laughs> of phenomenal proportions and size that he would give to his son to be his bride. What do you think the bride of Christ is? Just you and your buddies? Little pipsqueaks that you are? Or do you think God is doing something marvelous in our eyes? Something wonderful? Something you can share with everyone. Something you can declare even if you don't understand it completely. Now, there are probably people that don't want to get on board, you know, and they still want to go do their thing, but you don't have to worry about them. Because if you're the bride, you're looking for the groom, right? Think about it. I think you'll find that there's more to living than taking from other people their joy or ripping off their peace, or destroying their love. I think, rather than give them the condemnation of religion, you might want to help them restore a relationship that they have with Jesus, because when they got saved, they did it because they loved Him, not because they listened to you point fingers at them. Stay in agreement. Know the God of your Father, and have personal knowledge of Him, and be acquainted with and understand Him, Appreciate, heed, and cherish Him, and serve Him with a blameless heart and a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and minds and understands all the wanderings of the thoughts. If you seek Him, and you inquire for Him and of Him, and require Him as your first and most important vital necessity of life, even before you breathe, you will find Him. First Chronicles 28.9 God's Word reveals a wonderful plan for your life. It shows how God sees you and what He has for you through Jesus. Keep your thoughts and words in agreement with God's Word, not interpreting it. Say, everything I lay my hand to, I give to God, and everything I do, I do with God, and everything that I want, I want from God, and when you do, God will prosper you. Go ahead and acknowledge that he is going to lead your going out, your uprising, and your down sitting. That He is with you always, even unto the end of the day. The blessings of God will always pour out upon you as you choose to follow Him all the days of your life. And whether you know it or not, God will lead you into a greater sphere of influence than you ever have known before. For He will bring you into a place and a time and a comfort that even in poverty or in prosperity, 
in life or in death, whether in the furnace or in standing outside and watching these things transpire, you will say, whether I live or whether I die, is irrelevant to me because I stand with the Son of God who loves me. Isn't that what you want to be? It's your choice. You could do what you want to do. But personally, I think I'll go with God today. I like kind of tri tripping around the world with you know what He wants me to do. Because I think He wants it His way, not our way.